Hey guys, I'm Chris, and today we're gonna give you a glimpse inside of how we make a farmhouse table. Yes, we do have a farmhouse table on this channel already, but this one, this one's for a great cause. At my work, my day job, if you will, we're running a campaign to benefit the March of Dimes. If you don't know what the March of Dimes is, it's a great charity, I'll link their website down below, but they benefit preemie babies, essentially. And it speaks due to our heart. This one was a little bit early. She was almost a month early and I was a little over two months early as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some reclaimed lumber and we're gonna make a farmhouse table out of it. We're gonna raffle it off at work and all the money raised is gonna benefit the March of Dimes. So without further ado guys, thanks for joining us and let's get right into it. Well, here we go guys. Here is some old reclaimed lumber I got from the place that I work. We were essentially just throwing this away. I got approval to go ahead and take it home to make this table and now you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and break it down. I'm not worried about removing the nails. I'm just literally gonna cut them off. Quick and simple. So instead of taking a pry bar to these two by fours, typically you do that when you have a pallet, but this time there were four or five nails per board. I decided to just take my circular saw and rip it right through. I do want to say this, all this material came from this piece of equipment that got delivered to our store. The wood was essentially going to be thrown out, so we're using it to make this table. I did, however, donate one piece of plywood, and here it is. It's just going to be the base of the table that the whole thing is going to be built on. And here, I'm just marking out where the table legs are going to go. I did a little mock-up of what the base is going to be, and now I'm cutting these pieces thusly to make sure they fit in place just right. And I do recommend cutting each piece that's going to be parallel to each other under the table. Cut those at the same time. That way you know they're exactly the same length. On to pocket holes. Simple, simple joinery reconstruction here. Nothing too crazy. I drill pocket holes throughout each of these boards. And I go ahead and mark a line where I want these boards to be. And I attach them just like this. You can see here I'm using a clamp to go ahead and hold this in place as I put these screws in. However, I realize that they're really not necessary. Put the piece down. You got the holes pre-drilled, you're good to go. The 1x6s that were available to me weren't exactly the length I needed, so I decided to go ahead and trim them all to the same length with this cross cut sled. And the reason being is I'm making a brick pattern. Well, because I didn't have the long pieces I needed to make one continuous strip down the whole length of the table, I figured this brick pattern is the best way to do it. Day two, let's get right into it. All right, well, we've got this table roughly made so far. We've got this brick pattern in here. We're gonna refine this a little bit, kind of sand these down, trim them up just a little bit to give it a better look, and let's get right into it. Let's go. Okay, I start out today by using my surface planer, and I'm gonna take each and every one of these boards and run it through it to kind of get it down to the right size I need, also cleaning up any imperfections along the way. Each piece then is gonna be taken to the router with a 45 degree angle chamfer bit and it puts a small, small chamfer on there. The reason being is, is once these pieces are joined together, it gives you a slight little reveal, a slight little look there to kind of give it that rustic feel. That process took a little bit of time, but in the end, it's all worth it. As you can see, it looks a little bit better than it did before. Now, each piece needs to be sanded as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and end it about a 180 grit sandpaper. And the construction couldn't be simpler. A little glue, a little brads, lay that pattern down one by one, and sure enough, it comes together pretty nice. Take your time here, make sure everything lines up just right, and you'll be rewarded in the end with a great looking table. The reason I cut these boards a little oversized was I love coming back here with a flush trim bit on my router. It's the simplest way to make both pieces match up exactly dead set perfect. I absolutely love this tool. Now here I'm ripping these pieces to width. These are gonna be the edge banding that's gonna cover up that raw edge that that router just made. I go ahead and run them through the surface planer as well. I cut one side to 45 degrees. There it is. And I match it up to one edge. Go ahead and mark the other. Set my motor saw at another 45 degree angle. Cut it to size. Take your time here. You can always inch up on the cut. Don't be too aggressive with how much material you take away. Take your time, everything should go smooth.
Although this table is rustic, you can see how these strips give it a nice finished look. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of every build is the sanding. Look how, oh my gosh, look how much fun I'm having. And then after the sanding, I coat it with mineral spirits to kind of get some of that dust off. And now I make my way to the two by fours and we're gonna cut the legs. After taking that rounded edge off the two by fours on the table saw, I go ahead and run them through the surface planer again and I glue them up here. I glue every other one, essentially doubling them up, give it some nice clamping pressure and let it set for a few hours. Now I was lucky to get a few pieces of two by sixes with this because I'm gonna use these as the corner brackets that the legs are gonna be lag bolted into later on. These pieces will be plenty strong to hold these legs in place and they go in with little pocket holes and a little glue. I then come back and pre-drill two holes and put in some inch and a quarter screws on each side to hold it in place. Now, I can take apart these clamps and check out how these legs are gonna look. To make the legs appear a little bit thicker, I'm gonna take these one by threes and go ahead and glue them on two 90 degree sides of the legs, giving the appearance of a little bit thicker leg. Then, I take them to the table saw on this tapering jig that's essentially gonna take a wedge out from top to bottom on two different sides, 90 degrees from each other, giving that nice tapered look that you commonly see on a lot of tables these days. I realized that my table saw didn't quite make the cut, so what I had to do is I had to come back with a Japanese handsaw. That thing is awesome. If you don't have one of those and you work with wood, I recommend you get one. They're on Amazon, just Amazon Japanese handsaw. They're awesome. All right, now, onto the chop saw, I go ahead and set a stop block up to these legs, trimming them to final size. And then, on the bottoms of each leg, I go ahead and put a 45 degree angle chamfer to limit splitting as the table's moved across the floor. Now, this technique of attaching the legs with a lag screw is tried and true. All you need is one lag screw going right through that piece, right into the leg, and you are in business. Now, I take it down. First time I'm gonna see this table in place, and I like it, looks pretty good. But before I call it a day, I'm gonna go ahead and put the first coat of stain on it. Let that kind of permeate through the wood surface overnight. I'm using a stain called Kona is the stain, essentially a dark walnut stain, if you will, by Minwax or Varathane makes this one. And it's called Kona, K-O-N-A. I love that stain. Now, I realize that the edges aren't quite taking the stain like they should between the slats, so I go ahead and take a brush and I go ahead and brush those in thusly giving the nice appearance of a brick pattern table like I intended. I go ahead and flood the surface back with the stain again. And I let that permeate through the surface for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I come back with a rag, wipe off the excess, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight and come back at this thing tomorrow. steps all right we have to clear coat the top and paint the legs white and then we're done all right so let's get right into it okay now time for some finish we go ahead and put some polycrylic on this is a semi-gloss by minwax this stuff looks really good on rustic projects as i make my way to the legs as the first coat of finish is drying i decided to paint these legs white two coats is all that's required Now it's time to sand in between coats. I like these green Scotch-Brite pads you get from the home center or your local grocery store. These things are great. They hook up into the hook and loop Velcro on your orbital sander, and they take care of all those little imperfections and bumps in that first coat. Now, it's time to essentially lather, rinse, repeat. We take another coat of polycrylic, let that dry for a couple hours, come back again with the sander with the same Scotch-Brite pad, and keep on going, so on and so forth. I ended up doing three coats on this one, and then finally a fourth coat, and it turned out great. And that's it guys, this brings me to the end of the project for charity. I tell you, it really does feel good to get out there and give back. Hey guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end. This is the final product here. I really, really like how it turned out. I really hope that some family will benefit from eating at this for years. Hey, you never know, right? So I hope this has inspired you to go out and find any type of reclaimed material, um, whether it's salvaged lumber or salvage anything, and just go out and try to think outside the box and make something. 
All right, thank you again so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next project. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. This project was a blast to build. Only took about three days to do, and of course, it's for a great cause. If you like this, hit me up with a thumbs up down there. If you want to leave me a comment, I would welcome. I try to answer every single one that I get, and again, I'd advise you to subscribe to the channel as well. If you like this project and you want to see some other things that we're doing here at Glimpse Inside, I've got other projects as well. Check them out. They're going to be over here. And also, thank you so much for watching. I know she appreciates it as well. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again.